right, if you're working on any of these problems from the normal probability distribution, which hopefully by now in your reading you know a standardized normal probability distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So please know that. Um, and then you can compute z-scores by taking the value of interest minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation. But I'm going to show, and then you look the probabilities up in a table. I'm going to show you how much faster StatCrunch is. So notice here I have z equals 0 0.53. I know I'm going to go to page 2. How do I know that? Because that's a positive z-score. If the standardized is down the middle 0, anything to the right would be positive. So I look up 0 0.53, which is 0 0.7019. So, oops, 0 0.7019, okay, because you read from the bottom up to that line, okay, that's how you read these. Now, I could also go to, let me close this and reopen it, uh, stat, calculators, normal, because this is a normal distribution. Anytime you see that bell-shaped curve come right here. And I see a nice little calculator. I have a standard in, in between. I, this, in fact, even looks like this. The standardized mean zero, the standard deviation zero. I want it where it's less than 0 0.53. And looky, looky, looky. That fast, I don't have to use no stinking table. So let's look and see how do these change. Well, what if it's greater than? Ain't no big deal. You do a greater than 1.34. Compute. And that quickly, I have my answers. So if you use the table, then you would have had to find um, the area up to 1.34 and then do 1 minus because remember this whole curve probability adds to 1. Now what if you have something here with betweens? Look at that button right there, between. And now just put your negative 0 0.8, your 0 0.7, compute and there's your area so this is cool because i i have the video i'm trying to talk and type and round at the same time hopefully i did that right i have the video where i teach you how to read the z table but this is very cool because it's very fast all right let's say we get to something those are all the same these are all the same type problems no no difference there all right something like this so it says in a recent year the scores for the reading portion of a test were normally distributed. That means a normal curve. All right, this is going to be a less than, so I need the standard. The mean now is not standardized, so this is typically where you would have to use the z equals x, which is going to be your 16, minus the 21.4, and then divided by, oh, there it is, the standard deviation of uh -oh, 6.3. All right, I want less than the probability, oops, the probability that the score is less than 16, ba bam And so I can go right here and put one, nine, five, seven, rounded. And so th this is just very quick and even like a between, that's a between, the same mean, standard deviation. Now I want the probability between 29, Point five. So what this is doing is this is, uh oh, I typed the wrong number in. This is actually looking things up for you in the table. 8015. All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip. Just be careful, like more than, it's got to be greater than, and all that kind of stuff. Let me see if I can find one. Yes, I want to leave this question. Okay, something like this. Now, I already see this is a between area. However, there's kind of a trick to this. Remember, the entire curve has to add to 1. So that means this little white area, this gray area, this gray area, and that little white area have to add to 1. The fastest way to do this, why not find this z-score right here, which is just that white area? Well, how do I get it? Well, the two areas in the middle is 0.4778 twice. So that's 0.9556, all right? So that's this middle area. So what's left over? One minus 0.9556, 
which is 0 0.0444. I don't know if I said too many fours, <laughs> but I just want this area. So I have to divide that by two and notice now I have to standardize back here. If I just say less than 0.0222, again, how did I get that? I took one minus those two areas, so 0.4778 minus 0.4778, and then divided by two. Now, when I when I get this, okay, the, uh oh, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. I want this to be my area, 0.0222. Now, when I get this, this is under really understanding the sym symmetry of this curve. If you do not understand that z value and that z value are the same, but that's negative, that's positive, watch my videos where I explain this. I mean, you can click and use StatCrunch all day long, but if you're not understanding that this means this would be negative 2.0, oops, and 2.0, okay? So it's really getting you to understand how to figure out all these pieces. So. A lot of times it depends on, first of all, what are they even asking you for? Like notice this one here, it says the undergraduate, what is the minimum GPA? So right here I can see the mean is 3.26. I can see they told me the standard deviation is 0 0.17. Okay, so now notice here it says the top 10%. So basically what they're asking you for is to solve for X now, right? So it says, this is my, um, so if the top 10% would mean that the area would be the top 10%, right? And it's cool when you look at this, you can see that, oh yeah, this would be in the top 10%. Okay, so what's the minimum GPA? That number right there, which is 3.48, it looks like. So this even, this even allows you to solve for X. That's what you're solving for here. You could have manually did the algebra to solve for this, but I'm telling you, man, if you learn to use StatCrunch, you can ditch the Z tables, but it's, it's really getting you to understand these different, you know, how do these areas work? And ask me, send me any questions, you know, if you have any on these, but use, learn to use StatCrunch. I promise you it will be fast, and certainly you'll be to the point where, okay, now all you have to do is actually understand what the problem's asking.